I wasn't expecting to make this video. After months spent getting my weapons working in my game Scarlet Harvest and making three devlog videos about it, I thought I was done with game dev for 2025. That it was time to take a short break, play through some of my backlog and recharge my batteries ready for 2026. My friends were running a winter themed game jam, but I'd left it so late to enter that I had no hope of completing an entry in time. I didn't have a story, I didn't have any assets and I certainly didn't have enough time. But you know how it goes. Psst. What if you made a wholesome Christmas game about this I mean, yes, that is very wholesome. And you're right, there are things I want to try in Easy FPS Editor before I put them in Scarlet Harvest. And it would be a palate cleanser after months of blood soaked horror. What about you? Any words of wisdom? Oh, I gave up trying to reason with your creativity years ago. Just do what you gotta do. So, this is the story about how I made an entirely separate game in 25 days. Ish. To make my Game Jam entry worth it, I needed to use it as a testbed for things I may want to do in Scarlet Harvest. I had a list of small things I wanted to implement or learn how to do. The first of which was writing a simple fetch quest. It only took a single evening to get a simple fetch quest mechanic up and running. Speaking to a quest giver character, in reality just a decoration running a script, initiates the quest. You then pick up items in the level. If you return to the quest giver before you've collected all five items, they'll tell you how many more items you still need to collect. Then, once you've collected all five and returned to them, the quest is complete. As someone for whom programming doesn't come naturally, I was surprised how quickly I pulled this together. In fact, I only really greenlit this game because of how frictionless it was getting this mechanic working. I also wanted to create an NPC, or follower character. Easy FPS Editor doesn't support allies that can fight by your side, but if you create an enemy that always closes up to you and doesn't have an attack, that's basically like a follower who can't do anything. To continue the wholesome vibes, I decided to make this character a dog. I took the decision early on to hand draw my character sprites, as I figured it would be much faster than modelling and animating them in 3D. Long time viewers will know I often like to sketch my ideas, but I've never actually tried to do full on hand drawn animation. So this was a unique challenge. I drew my frames first in pencil, then went over the outlines in biro. At this stage, colour was a nice to have. I scanned my sketches, then cut out the frames in Photoshop to get a simple idle and run animation. Before long, I had a little companion to follow me around. Given the winter theme, I wanted the only combat in the game to be a snowball fight. So I drew some more frames and created a projectile weapon that needs to be reloaded after each firing. The ammo, I figured, would be fresh mounds of snow scattered around the level. Whilst I liked the hand-drawn aesthetic a lot, it would take too long to draw every asset in the game. I briefly experimented with Photoshop filters that would make regular textures look like colour pencil drawings, but I didn't like the results, so decided to just use PSX style assets I knew already existed. I knew I wanted at least one level to be set in a cosy countryside cottage. I sketched an initial floor plan and blocked this out in EFPSC to get a sense of scale. And it was way too big. Scaling down every room not only gave the house more realistic proportions, but also gave me less to furnish. To add a touch of authenticity, I modelled some bespoke window assets so I could slot right into my level. Back on Scarlet Harvest, I'd had to export different versions of every 3D model to give me the flexibility to place it at different orientations. But this project gave me an opportunity to use EFPSE's Build Mode, which allows you to rotate and place decorations within your level more precisely. This was a revelation and gave me a lot of confidence that I could furnish the house quickly. It also helped that I downloaded several PSX style asset packs from Itch that had all the domestic fixtures I could need. EFPSC handles 3D models in an unusual way. 
First, you make a new decoration. By default, this is designed to be a 2D sprite. But by using the 3D model configurator, you can tell the engine to substitute that flat sprite for a fully fledged 3D model at runtime. Caveats? It can only have one texture, and the mesh has to be in MD3 format, as used by the Quake 3 engine. I initially used Milkshape to convert my OBJ exports from Blender, until I found a Blender plugin that can do it directly, linked up here and in the description. The newly imported 3D model can then be loaded in build mode and positioned and rotated as you wish. This positional data can then be output to a script. Copy that information and pop it in a script named the same as your level and your models will load in at runtime, exactly where you place them. The final step was to add the gameplay, i.e. the fetch quest. This uses a combination of scripting and finite state machines to track how far through the quest the player is. It also gave me the opportunity to play with Visual Novel Mode, a feature of EFPSC I'd steered clear of until now. Essentially, it lets you display and move images around the screen, and write text to an auto-wrapping text box. You can also play sound effects and music. It's a rudimentary way to add story elements, but it allows for more interaction than a pre-rendered video because it waits for the player's interaction before advancing to the next step in the sequence. The auto-wrapping text is also very useful, so I ended up leaning on this mode much more than I thought I would. With the inside of the cottage largely complete, I moved outside to create a small arena for the snowball fight. I modelled the exterior of the cottage, being mindful to keep the same proportions as the interior level. It uses an atlas texture to repeat a handful of textures multiple times to ensure better fidelity. One downside of EFPSC is that the 3D models can only have box collision. That's not very realistic when it comes to rounded objects like bushes, so I ended up setting the bush models themselves to have no collision then using invisible modifiers to add something cylindrical to repel the player. For the taller trees beyond the bounds of the garden, I used build mode again to rotate and place them quickly. But it didn't really look dense enough to be a forest, and the ground was uniformly flat. What I really needed was terrain. Knowing how big one EFPSC tile is in Blender, I made a 64x64 64 64 tile mesh and used the Sculpt tool to add some basic undulations. I then wrapped this in a billboard texture of some trees to break up the horizon. I messed up the texture on the first export, but the results were still promising. I can't remember seeing anything quite like this done in Easy FPS Editor before. But if I thought some hills in the distance were cool, what I had planned next was going to really push me. My original plan had been to model an entire village for Mildred and her dog to wander around but it became increasingly clear I didn't have the time to model lots of houses, let alone figure out how to do road layouts, climbable hills, and make other residents. All I really needed from the third level was somewhere to walk the dog, and some form of obstacle to provide some challenge. Instead of a village, I decided to set level 3 in some woods near the family cottage. I modelled a slightly more complex terrain with a looping path the player needed to follow. The terrain itself has no collision, so I used regular blocks to make the floor and wall off the bits of the level I didn't want the player to be able to get to. But what about challenge? I wanted to have gates blocking Mildred's path that can only be unlocked from the other side. Since only she can climb over the stiles to unlock the gates, she's opening them so the dog can follow her through. First step, model fence assets and a gate. Step 2. Animate the gate and get that animation into Easy FPS Editor. I'd never done animated 3D models in EFPSC before, so this was a learning experience. And eventually, why the aforementioned MD3 Blender plugin came in so handy. You also need to write a finite state machine that tells the engine when to display each frame of animation. Now for the difficult bit. You can't switch collision on and off at will in EFPSC. If I wanted the dog to come through that gate, like, at all, it couldn't have collision. But how would I keep the dog, and the player, behind the gate initially? What if I put a locked door in the same spot as the gate? Then, when the player jumps over the stile, they trigger the door to unlock, 
but stay closed. That way, when they press E to interact with the gate, they'll also be interacting with the door and opening it, therefore allowing the dog to pass through. I used a transparent texture to hide the door and collision boxes, as well as invisible modifiers. It's pretty janky, even in the final game, but it works okay. For story reasons, I wanted to add another character that made Mildred question whether Father Christmas is real. This interaction is a simplified version of the fetch quest Mum sends you on, and I definitely rushed the sprites on this character as I was running out of time. But the game was slowly taking shape. The game jam I entered had been running since the 19th of October, with only a rough deadline of the second weekend in December. I'd achieved so much in 19 days, but my game was still far from ready. Fortunately, I was granted a last minute reprieve, as the organisers, in consultation with the participants, agreed to extend the deadline by an extra week. The final push saw me adding polish wherever I could. I scripted an objective screen that updates as you progress through each level. I experimented with emissive textures to create cosy Christmas lights for the final level. I added more buildings to the woods level. I was also able to add colour to some of my sprites. In the case of Mildred, who features in the game's pre-rendered videos, I did this digitally. But I coloured Rolf the dog in by hand, which meant rescanning his sketches, cutting them out again, and swapping out the original line drawing ones for the new colour pencil versions. Even with this, I didn't have time to colour in every sprite. I wasn't able to add narration to every line of dialogue. There were still bugs. Sparse bits of level, and awkward music transitions. But, I'd made a game start to finish in 25 days. A game with four levels, varied gameplay, a simple but heartwarming story, and a cosy atmosphere. And I'd learned so much about the limitations of Easy FPS Editor, but also the opportunities. What scripts can and can't do, how visual novel mode can help convey story, the life-saving build mode, how to get animated models into the engine, and so much more. The game jam itself was broadcast on Twitch. Oh, we have 3D models and everything, and we are small. We are a little child. God damn, this is cool. Oh, this is, this is, this is awesome. How good is this? Come on, those animations. Scott, you need to release this, people will love it. Those animations are so good. Please don't be the drunk, drunk Santa Claus. It is the drunk Santa Claus. <laughs> you can see, you can see. Yes, he, he has blood in his pocket. <laughs> I did foreshadow it. It's actually very interesting now. Very, very, even the Christmas lights. Oh, that is cool. That is, that is very cool. That was f very nice. Like, very different than anything else we had today. So the real question is, what happens now? Mildred's Christmas Eve is unfinished, as far as I'm concerned, and uh, whereas before I thought that maybe finishing it just meant colouring in a few sprites and maybe tweaking a couple of lines of code, the more I watch other people play it, and uh, the more I kind of make this video, essentially, I've realized that there's quite a lot of things I'd want to tweak and change and maybe redo. Um, and to be honest, the project as a whole has kind of served its purpose. I've, I've learned everything I think I really wanted to learn from it. So I'm going to put what I've got up on itch for now. Um, there'll be a link up here and down in the description below so that you can play it. Um, it's Christmas time, so perfect time to play it rather than waiting two months for me to finish it. It's now time for me to actually take a break, to put down my tools, Think about the lessons learned and how I can apply them to Scarlet Harvest. Don't expect a new devlog for a while, for real this time, but do expect Scarlet Harvest to benefit from my soppy little Christmas game. Thanks for watching and Merry Christmas.